This happened in 1924. There was a bishop in the Orthodox Greek uh, religion where, you know, there's Orthodox Greek segment of uh, Christians. They have a pope of their own in Istanbul. They believe they are the only true Christians. Others are all riffraff, according to them. So, he served this particular segment, which is very orthodox and rigid. Being in Istanbul, being on the Silk Route, all kinds of stories of Indian mysticism kept wafting across the Bosphorus. So, he has a longing to go to India and see a real yogi or a mystic. But being a man of cloth, he could not choose where to go and where not to go. After he passed sixty years of age, when he semi-retired, he got an opportunity and went to India and came to southern India. So his desire is to meet a real yogi, not a book yogi, not a studio yogi, but a real one. So somebody directed him and said, go up this hill, there in this kind of place, there will be one yogi. So he went up. Well, he's not made for the mountains, he went huffing and puffing up and then he found in front of a small cave, a yogi was sitting, eyes closed, totally blissed out. He went there and uh, he has been told that if you see a yo Indian yogi, you must prostrate. Well, he was not made for that <laughs> but he somehow managed, huffed and puffed and sat down. Hearing this com commotion, the yogi opened his eyes and smiled. Immediately the bishop looked at him and said, Can I ask you a question? The yogi said, By all means. The bishop asked, What is life? This is after sixty. You should have asked this question when you were eight, <laughs> at least when you're sixteen, <laughs> sixty. But what to do, better late than never, <laughs> he asked. Then the yogi <coughs> laughed and went into raptures. Oh, life… life is like the fragrance of jasmine upon gentle spring breeze. The bishop looked at him and said, what? <laughs> Life is like fragrance of jasmine upon gentle spring breeze. Our teacher told us, life is like a thorn. <laughs> Once it gets into you, if it… if you sit, it hurts, if you stand, it hurts, if you lie down, it hurts. <laughs> what is this fragrance of jasmine upon gentle spring breeze? Spring breeze? So the yogi smiled and said, well, that's his life <laughs> So this comes from the fundamental that when a human being clearly, experientially understands that entire experience of human life is created from within, never from outside. Right now as you sit here, do you at least see me? Even if you're not listening to me, I'm saying. <laughs> Can you use your hand and show where I am? Ah, no, no, you're getting it all wrong. You know, I'm a mystic from South India <laughs> Now this light is falling upon me, reflecting, going through your lenses, inverted image in the retina, you know the whole story. Where do you see me right now? Within yourself. Where do you hear me right now? Within yourself, where have you seen the entire world? Within yourself, have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself? Right now, someone next to you, if they touch you, you think you're experiencing their hand. No, you're only experiencing the sensations in your hand. In the very nature of things, you cannot experience anything outside of yourself. 
when everything, when the entire experience of life is caused from within you, at least it must happen the way you want it, isn't it? Hmm? The world will not happen the way you want it. At least <laughs> the experience of living here within you must happen the way you want it. If… if… if your experience of life happened just the way you want it, how would you keep yourself, blissful or miserable? Please, you must tell me I'm going to bless you. <laughs> blissful or miserable? For yourself, definitely highest level of pleasantness for yourself. What you want for your neighbor may be debatable, <laughs> but you know what you want for yourself, isn't it? Now, blissfulness or pleasantness of life is not a goal by itself. It is only when you're blissful by your own nature. That means you determine the nature of your experience. No matter what is the situation, you determine the nature of your experience or in other words, you have no fear of suffering. Only and only when there is no fear of suffering will you walk full stride in this life. Otherwise, it's always about what will happen to me, what will happen to me. Every step is a half a step. Now, this so-called spirit of Eastern wisdom comes from those beings who walked full stride, who determined the nature of their experience. The outside never decided who they are. So, they could walk full stride and explore the depths and dimensions of life that others never dared to touch because most of the humanity is only concerned about what will happen to me. What will happen to me means what? Will I suffer? That's a question. The first and foremost thing, if you truly want to explore dimensions which we are referring to as another dimension of wisdom or knowing, is that first you must determine the nature of your experience. You have no fear of suffering. Only then, truly exploring human consciousness becomes a reality, touching dimensions of intelligence which gives access to the entire universe becomes a possibility.